if I had a coil and I took a bar magnet and moved it in and out of the coil, would I get an electric field? If I was changing the magnetic field, I would get an electric field. Would I get an EMF? Yes, you would. No matter what's happening, you'll get an EMF. That is just the integral of the electric field dotted on a completely circular path or a, a complete loop. Would I get current? That one depends. What's got to be there to actually get current if you have a changing magnetic flux? You need a conductor, and you also need a complete circuit. If you have a conductor with, that just has nothing connected to it, it's an open circuit, just a coil without the ends connected, you don't get current. Uh, the EMF will be in the same direction, uh, just like it's trying to create current. It's trying to keep the flux uh, close to being the same. Uh, it may not succeed if there's no conductor with a closed circuit. So uh, a ch any changing magnetic flux, phi B or phi B, however you decide to pronounce it, through a loop creates an electric field and an EMF. And the thing is, it even creates this when the changing magnetic flux is due to the current in the loop itself. You don't need an external magnet uh, or a separate coil to get a changing magnetic flux. This coil that's right here, if you turn on and off the current in that coil, first of all, will you get a magnetic field in the coil if you turn on current? Yes, in fact, uh, Easter Bunny, the magnetic field is equal to mu naught little n, the number of turns per unit length, times the current in the uh, coil. Uh, that is the magnetic field. And the magnetic flux through the coil is just that magnetic field times the cross-sectional area of the coil. And if you change the, that current, you will be changing magnetic field and hence changing the magnetic flux. Here's how this works. Uh, if you've got a a source EMF, and I close this switch right there by connecting those two, I will start getting a, uh, a I'll get a current in that, in that coil there. I will also start getting a magnetic field, and therefore I will get a changing magnetic flux. Here's what I want you guys to do. With this coil that's indicated right on here, I want you to tell me which way is the EMF that is produced when I close that switch. So that was from the, you should be able to do that from the last unit. Which way is the EMF that is induced in that coil when I close the switch? I want to know not the EMF due to the battery, but I want to know about the EMF due to the changing magnetic flux. Go ahead and give that a try, and then we'll discuss how to do that. So I am not moving a bar magnet at all. All I'm doing is turning on this, just closing that switch right there. That's all I'm doing. This is the positive side of the battery right here. Right there is positive side. There's the negative side. I'm just closing the switch. One hint is the switch starts open. What's the current in the coil when you start the switch? When, you, when it's open, rather. Nothing. Nothing. Then you close the switch like so, closing it, creating a complete circuit. Figure out which way the induced EMF is going to be. Go ahead and do that right now. And you can discuss that with someone next to you to help with that. Here's what we have to do to figure all that stuff out. We've got a, uh, it starts off with no current. Uh, what would you do with your thumb if there's no current in this coil? Make it go away, no thumb. But then we start current, when we close that switch, current starts going uh, through that coil, and that is going to look like this. Notice that Currents. it's gonna curl around, if this is your coil, it curls around first the back of the coil and comes around the front, that's the direction of positive current. So when we are, when, once the current's going, the magnetic field will be which way? to the right. So we start off with nothing and we, we end up with this. So which way is the change in magnetic field? To the right. Uh, nature does not like a changing magnetic flux, so it will try to oppose that. With a flux. And then it will create a, an EMF that is trying to go 
this away. Now, you guys, is that in the same direction or is that opposite to the EMF caused by the battery? That is in the opposite direction of the EMF caused by the battery. So we very often indicate the EMF as if this coil were a battery. As the current is increasing, there is a back EMF with this polarity. The positive side of this coil is on this side. The negative side is on this side. It's pushing against our source EMF. So we very often mark our coil like this. Now you got to be careful though because this coil will only have this polarity pushing backwards while the current is increasing. It does not like a current to change at all, so it's going to push against whichever way the current's changing. If the current's increasing, it'll push it backwards like this. There'll be a back EMF with this polarity. So this is why we call this a back EMF. It's called a back EMF because it is in the opposite direction typically as the applied EMF. Uh, and, and one other reminder, flux is a scalar, but we can keep track of the you know, positive or negative with our directional thumb. You're using a direction to indicate a scalar magnitude, whether it's positive or negative. Just wanted to clarify that. Uh, okay, so what we get is what is called a back EMF. Uh, the symbol for that back EMF is this thing right here. Uh, E L. It's a curly E. It's an EMF. That little L is the symbol for an inductor. It's a back EMF E sub L produced by a changing current in the coil. The reason you get an EMF when you change the current in the coil, because changing the current in the coil produces a changing you could say magnetic field or magnetic flux. It's because of changing current produces a changing magnetic field in our coil.